Yeah, is it on? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Okay, welcome everyone. Chaba and ideas for future Haskell tooling. Take it away. So, hello. Uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about a few of my ideas that I expect or would like to have. And it's an open question, but so in the end, we, we, so we can continue the discussion. So, so, tooling is about make the programmer's life easier, and especially the programmer's workflow. And uh, the workflow normally consists of three phases like uh, writing when the programmer writes new code, when it's ready, then it wants to make it more performance, so optimization needs to be done. Then after the program is deployed, if there is an issue, then it needs to be debugged. So <clears throat> in the past, when we wrote Haskell programs, it usually used the regular editors in, or GHCI. And luckily, recently, um, Endeavor cached up to write uh, usable IDEs, like the Haskell IDE engine and the GHC IDE. Uh, those IDEs' main goal is to make a fast feedback loop for programmers to fix the parse, to show, and, uh, to show parse and type errors, and let the programmer fix it quick, quickly. And also, these IDEs help with code navigation and uh, refactoring as, it, as the IDE knows about the, uh, the project dependencies also. So, uh, these, the Haskell IDE engine and the GAC IDE doesn't contain an editor. Usually, another editor is used for that. It, usually, VH, v, um, VS Code is, is the one, and it looks pretty good because it has nice UI. So, you, you can see this is how it works. Like, there's a um, type, hover, window, whatever. So. so, the architecture of these systems uh, norm typically uh, consists of uh, GHC, the ID, and the proto communication protocol between them, the, typically the language server protocol. But if we look underneath how GHC pipeline is involved here, uh, and where was the information, was the source of the information, usually it's just the first two phase of the pipeline, like a, a parse, the errors are generated by the type checker, either the parser. Uh, that's what these IDEs use. So uh, that actually covers when we write the, the, the case when we write new code. But uh, what about when we optimize code? Well, well then, we, then the programmer tries to have effect on the optimizer, and uh, that's the target of the communication. And the programmer does it with uh, using the Haskell features like uh, bank patterns, strict data fields, and inlining pragmas, or uh, he has to uh, Construct the write the code carefully so it uh, compiles to a tail, tail call, and this information what the programmer provides to the optimizer actually used by the uh, analysis system analysis uh, and um, and it infers further facts from that, and uh, the inferred information eventually is passed to the the code generator to use that. So the when the programmer wants to optimize the code, uh, eventually it. Uh, wants to have effect, um, wants to control the code generator. And what, the, like the important properties is the strictness properties. Uh, the code generator also mm, can, can decide, uh, can generate the code for closures with or without an update operation. Or it also mm, controls whether the uh, data mm, node has, uh, is allocated on stack or heap or on heap. So the, the, the issue here is that while the programmer provides information for the analysis that provides it further to the code generator, the programmer doesn't get feedback for, um, from the information what the inference and the analysis infers. So, so that this is an issue uh, and uh, it's quite kind of frustrating because uh, yeah, getting feedback is a good thing. So the, the thing is that the Ideally, that information should be sent back to the IDE and mapped to the source code. And technically, I believe it's possible because the source code information, the source locations are 
passing passed through the whole compilation pipeline of GHC. So it's there, it's just not utilized. So in case of uh, debugging code, uh, the programmer interacts with the runtime system. And the typical issues here to do is chasing space leaks or tracking resources like open files or figuring out why the, mem why the program uses that much memory or CPU. And the, the tooling for that is, could be the simplest one is debug printing or the event log or the relying on the runtime system statistics. That's for the compiled binary uh, program. If we are allowed to use a sandbox environment, we, can, we could use a, a GHCI debugger for that, but uh, if, our, if we want to debug our program, which is deployed, then it's, it's not an option. So the, the issue here is that even though the runtime system, the garbage collector, knows everything about the, um, the heap, heap structure, um, so even though the, the runtime system knows everything about the heap structure, it's, uh, and, and also the source locations are compiled to the binary, it's just not used. Uh, maybe, so the, in the, the best case, this should also project it back to the source code somehow. And uh, like, uh, he, he, th th this could be one option, like uh, if, uh, Let's imagine that every value created at runtime is tracked and so that, uh, that the, so the source location which created that value is attached to that. And this information should be enough to, to visualize that arbitrary statistics on the source code, like for example as a source code heat map, where the temperature or the Indica would indicate the color coding would indicate the importance or the frequency of the of a property, like the memory usage, or CPU, or or, um, or telling which uh, expressions are still in the on still on unevaluated uh, phase on the heap, or even just collecting statistics, uh, how long did an expression uh, spend, how much time did it spend on before it got evaluated. So, but this, uh, the runtime has the machinery uh, to collect this kind of information. At least it could be mm, tracked or logged by the event log mm, framework. But uh, the, what, what's missing eventually is the, the good UI for this. Um, <coughs> so, there are projects which exists, which is cool with, this, with similar goals, like, uh, like uh, this remote debugger that I found. Uh, it's, it's a work in progress uh, project. Um, and it, it's, it says that it's, uh, it can connect to an external process via Unix sockets and can analyze the heap structure and visualize it. So this is kind of... Uh, could be used as a, as a prototype for, for, the, for implementation, or even this could be extended to, to have what, what I showed. The other, what I've, what other interesting what I found is, uh, is a web service uh, which, is, which maintains a bidirectional map between the source code and the generated machine code. And C++ programmers usually use this feature, but it's not usual in the Haskell world, but, uh, this uh, project shows that it's absolutely feasible, and however, maybe it's not not for the average user. But when you want to want to optimize at max, then this is really handy. And the other the other tool uh, what I found is not related to Haskell. It's a it's a web-based uh, UI for GDB, the GNU debugger, uh, where the GDB provides the information, streams it to the browser, and the nice UI is written in using React and other JavaScript visualization and chart stuff. And it's really convincing and really, it makes it easy to, to build a, a UI with, with good user experience, like relying on existing and working technologies. So it, for, for example, 
I can, I can imagine something similar to Haskell also. And uh, so actually that's what I wanted to show. And as I said, this is an open question. It was just rough ideas and I'm open. I'm, I'm, I'm like happy to, to have discuss have discussion about this if you have other ideas. Any questions? Got a couple of minutes. If anybody's right to ask any questions? Um, ben? Uh, recently, I saw on the Rust community there was a lot of work to uh, modify the compiler so that it, it's more incremental with the explicit ID to support tooling behind. So, like, you can get, like, type annotation and, like, type introspection quicker. Do you think we need that in GHC? Or, and if yes, like, what, what kind of, what, um, like, what effort would be required to get, like, these kind of modifications in? Uh, I, so this was about tooling, not GHC. The, the, the thing, I think when you have feedback, it's always good. And when you, when you have it quickly, that's even better. So the... So my, I think the message of this talk is that GHC compiles a lot of information, provides to the backend, and manages to compile to the binary, which is not utilized, and that that should be used, and the nice UI should be built for that. So I think the more information is visualized, the, the better. For example, if you have feedback uh, like uh, like uh, like from the effect of the optimization analysis it can have effect so it can influence the programmer uh, to like if the linearity would be visualized in a source code then maybe in the future linear haskell that could be lifted to the type level <coughs> because maybe it was an unexpected design that some variable is linear anyway, but it wasn't designed that way, but the, the analysis just uh, shows, shows that to you that, and you, the programmer might rethink the design, or that's, that the analysis reveals other properties what was not expected by the programmer. So that's why it is good to have feedback from the analysis, because it does the job anyway, and the code generator uses that, that why not let the programmer know about that? Okay, well, thanks, guys. Uh, great talk. Big round of applause for Chaba, please. Thank you.